In a bold move, the Papal States declared war on Scandinavia on the 20th of August. Meanwhile, the 40 new light infantry divisions which were being conscripted at the time were to be deployed along the border with Belarus, establishing two front lines there in preparation for a future invasion. Romania knew not when it would be ready for the next war, but it knew where it would be waging it next. Belarus was significant because it was a neighboring democracy that cut off direct access to the newly acquired Romanian Baltic states and Romanian Tver. Around this time, Romania also began to covertly boost the popularity of the fascist party in France, hoping that with enough support they could wrest control of President Edouard Daladier's democratic system there. Apparently this support was enough to put France over the edge, and much to the surprise of Christaku, France erupted into civil war, with scarcely any Romanian backing. The government suspected it must have been the fellow fascists in Poitou that instigated such a significant political event. As such, Romania immediately began sending money, equipment, and volunteers to support Philippe Pétain and his fascist France. These volunteers took the form of four divisions under General Daniel Hereju. With these divisions also came 1,000 Orita M1941s every month. Those four divisions were called the Volunteer Army, and they helped press the front line on towards the provisional democratic French capital of Bern. Spearhead orders were given to be as ruthless as possible, and to show Pétain what fascist doctrine really looked like. On the 4th of November 1939, Romania invented improved decimetric radar. By November, 5,000 barrels of oil and 100 105mm Schneiders were sent as part of the monthly shipment. On the 1st of January 1940, 12 divisions total arrived to the aid of the French Republic from other democratic nations of the world, namely England, Deccan, and the Republic of Wu. The French Civil War at this point was characterized by its particular brutality. The widespread use of landmines by the armies of the Republic and the superior firepower of the fascists made for an environment where no prisoners were to be taken. Coming to the aid of yet another one of their fellow democratic states, England and the Republic of Wu declared war on the Papal States in the interests of relieving the tired forces of the Bavarian Republic, which was still fighting in the Alps. Meanwhile, Bern was captured on the 9th of March, and on the 10th of April, Deccan declared war on the Papal States as well. By the 10th of June, the French Republic was bisected at Limousine. The Volunteer Army pressed south, helping with that offensive which had trapped the Ingolesk, Decani, and Wu forces between fascist France and the Mediterranean Sea. On the 6th of July 1940, the French Civil War ended in favor of the fascists. Philippe Pétain set the capital of his new France in Troyes and immediately forged a close relationship with Romania. As soon as the Volunteer Army returned, Romania officially guaranteed the independence of France, and any nation that would wish to do it harm would have to face the might of the Iron Legion as well. On the 10th of September 1940, the republics of Bavaria, England, and Valois guaranteed the independence of Belarus. In response, Romania began to promote fascist elements in Valois and the Papal States once more. On the 6th of November 1940, seeing that the Papal States had left so much land open and undefended right on its border, France declared war on them. By the 6th of January, France's war was going well. They had occupied all of Papal Iberia and were beginning to break through their western defenses in the Transalpine region. On the 6th of June 1941, the war justifications were finished and the world sat on the edge of its seat. If Romania decided to invade, the world would plunge into the Third Great War. Sergiu Cristecu first sent messages to France, Japan, J.B. Sanma, Brazil, all of them fascist states. That day, General Cristecu announced the founding of the Iron Pact, the first true international political faction in the world. War was then declared on the 7th of June, 1941. Ultimately, it was Romania, Wallachia, France, Japan, Brazil, and J.B. Sanma in the Iron Pact against Belarus, Valois, Bavaria, England, the Caribbean, Burgundyholm, Cascadia, and the Papal State. World War III had indeed begun. Now, the Papal State wasn't allied to the other side, but rather a co-belligerent in its own war with France. Troop movements began effective immediately. The Belarusian line stood little chance of resisting the Iron Legion. By the 11th of June, all the other fascist nations of the world had petitioned to join the Iron Pact, and they were accepted, 
namely the Nigerian military state, newly fascist Ansbach, and John Poor. Belarus was bisected on the 12th of June at Orsha. On the 14th of June, Ingria joined on the side of the Iron Pact. Soon enough, the rest of the Iron Pact would join World War III, making it truly global. By the 19th of June, the Belarusian capital, Baranovici, was taken. Fulo was the first country to capitulate in this war, and it was the first member of the Iron Pact to surrender. They capitulated to Valois, which annexed their territory. On the 22nd of July, the Papal States joined the League of Honor, founded by Astorius. Astorius and Americon joined World War III against the Iron Pact. Valois, Democratic John Poor, and Democratic Osage joined the League of Honor, joining the war against the Iron Pact. On the 25th of July, in a shocking turn of events, the people of the Republic of Wu and Deccan elected fascists into office, who promptly asked to join the Iron Pact. General Kristeku hesitantly agreed, because though they were still republics, Wu Tan and Talia Pogauda stood at the helms of the largest military and largest industry respectively, and their participation in this conflict would turn the tide in favor of the Iron Pact. The Treaty of Baranovici was signed on the 9th of August, and resulted in the complete annexation of Belarus, and marked the initial end of the war in the Eastern European theater. At that point in the war, six million people had died so far. By the 19th of August, Liège, Cambodia, and Luang Prabang had kicked England out of Asia. Brazil was making steady progress against them in South America, and fascist Osage were juggling both them and the democratic Osage at the same time. On the other side, Valois was making some serious gains into French territory. Bavaria was stubbornly holding their own on a war with a long and winding front, and Romania's capacity to manufacture infantry equipment on such a massive industrial scale was beginning to fail, as resources like rubber and tungsten began to run dry. On the 29th of August, Democratic John Poor capitulated to John Poor, taking an important member from the League of Honor. By this point, fighting along the Western Front with Bavaria and Anglesk Austria proper had been reduced to trench warfare. Nearly 900,000 men from nations all over the world were stationed on either side of that border, and countless died every day. The earth was being reduced to mud, and with the detonation of every artillery shell, the cursed ground was made bereft of fruitful life. On the 3rd of September, a Cisalpine offensive was launched from the east of the Alps in the hopes of finally breaking the will of the Papal States to keep fighting. That country had been at continuous war for longer than any other nation and was, as a result, the one major power closest to capitulation. On the 4th of September, Scandinavia elected the fascist Nils Nordenskull to office and he requested membership in the Iron Pact. They joined the war the next day and created a two-front war for Valois and surrounded Bavaria, while threatening England's home islands. The Republic of Wu attempted to land several major armor divisions there later that month, but were largely unsuccessful, being turned away by the Engelisk. On the 5th of October, Ingria capitulated to Bavaria, reopening the Eastern Theater, which Phalangist Poland was eager to close for the Iron Pact. On the 9th of October, 1941, Bavaria founded the European Association, which Ingloland immediately joined. On the 16th of October, Romanian scientists working on the Zalmoxis experiment invented the nuclear reactor. By the 7th of November, air superiority was achieved over much of Bavaria, thus the bombing of cities such as Dresden, Kustrin, Magdeburg, and Berlin could begin. With no precedent for this level of aerial warfare, those cities and inhabitants thereof were subject to the terror and the flames essentially out in the open. The Bavarians were forced to construct shoddy air raid shelters, some of which would collapse under direct hits or cave in at their entrances, trapping them below ground. Until this point, many of the Republic's generals had thought that their people would be safe in the interior, but the home front had now been revealed as bloody in its own right. They could only try their best to regain air superiority while whistling bombs demolished medieval buildings from the old German Reich, reducing those grand Gothic testaments to rubble. By the 15th of November, seven million more people had died. This war was already the deadliest conflict in human history scarcely a year after it began. 
On the 17th of November, it was decided that resources would need to be diverted from the Zelmoxis experiment to fund the creation of light armored divisions in order to pierce the Bavarian line that was holding up the war. These light tanks were to be produced in central Hungary, directly behind the front line. On the 3rd of December 1941, Wu-Tan attempted to install himself as dictator with the support of the military, but factions within the secret police killed him before he could achieve victory, and another election was held. A pro-republic candidate won, and Wu withdrew from the Iron Pact. From that point on, they would only technically be involved in the war, if only to reserve themselves a seat at the table of eventual peace talks. On the 3rd of December, it was announced that the Romanian economy would be geared towards one of total war, with extensive conscription, emergency factory conversion, and government land confiscation. Women were also encouraged to work in these new factories as their brothers and husbands were off at war.